Tomo News presents Pest Control. The land of IKEA now has something new, Ratzilla. Thanks to the food waste generated by city dwellers, rats are now a major problem in the land of IKEA. Um, we meant Sweden. Just last month, a woman named Martina Gustafsson spotted two birds fighting over something unusually big at a park in Gothenburg. Gustafsson told Sweden's SVT that she first thought it was a rabbit, but turns out it was a giant rat. My, 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 would you just look at that. A pest control expert in Gothenburg later told SVT that he suspected the giant rodent to be about 10 inches long, and it's normal for brown rats. Well, this giant fellow certainly isn't the first find in Ratland. In 2014, a Swedish family in Solna, Sweden, rose to national fame after catching a giant rat with a rat trap. Oh, and the rodent survived. Just call a professional. This is what happens when you mix alcohol, fire, bed bugs, and a multifamily unit. An unidentified woman reportedly thought it was wise to try and exterminate bed bugs with alcohol near an open flame last Friday night in Cincinnati. The blaze put three people in hospital and displaced 10 residents from the building. Total damage for the fire was reported to be almost a quarter of a million bucks. Building resident Cameron Leish live-streamed the blaze on Facebook. He said he and his two brothers lost everything. Reportedly, this is the second time in two weeks that a Cincinnati resident has gone up in flames while someone was trying to kill bedbugs. Local fire chief Randy Friel gave profound advice for dealing with bedbugs, and that's get a professional. Man blows up rental car in dumb attempt to get rid of bedbugs. Scott Kemry of Long Island, New York, got himself a rental car and was displeased to find the vehicle was infested with bedbugs. Someone told Scott he could eradicate the critters with alcohol. Nah, not the stuff you drink before work. You know, the industrial kind. So Scott dowels the car, and after all that hard work, he decided to take a quick smoke break. In the freaking car! You don't need much of an imagination to figure out what happened next. Boom! Boom, boom, and boom. The massive fireball completely destroyed Scott's rental car. No one died, but Scott suffered first and second degree burns. And we're gonna guess he's gonna have a bit of trouble convincing the rental company bedbug fires are covered in the warranty. Scott might also have to pony up for the two other cars that were severely damaged in the inferno. But on the bright side, none of those vehicles now have bedbugs. Australia releases plans for its so-called Carpageddon. The Australian government has committed 15 million Australian dollars of its federal budget towards eradicating its biggest freshwater pest, the common carp. Australia's carp population has gotten so out of control that the invasive species makes up 80% of the fish biomass in Australia's Murray-Darling Basin. Adult carp, as they have no natural predators in Australia and can adapt to different environments, easily outcompete native fish species for food and resources. As current population control measures, such as trapping and commercial fishing, have had little effect on carp populations over large areas, the government has had to get a little more creative. To combat the rising carp population, Australia plans to release a carp-specific herpes virus into the basin. The virus attaches to their skin, gills, and kidneys and makes it difficult for the fish to breathe. The virus multiplies in the carp for about a week, and fish usually die 24 hours after they first show signs of the virus. While the virus kills the majority of carp populations, it has no effect on native fish species or other aquatic animals. Much of the $15 million the government has set aside for the project will go towards cleaning up the dead carp. Thailand discovers new anti-malaria drug. Thailand's National Science and Technology Development Agency, in a press conference on Monday, announced its discovery of the P218 chemical, a new anti-malaria drug that is expected to go through clinical trials before being manufactured. Malaria is caused by a parasite passed from one human to another by the bite of an infected Anopheles mosquito. When an infected mosquito bites a human, the parasite enters the human host's liver. Once there, the parasite begins replicating rapidly. The parasites next enter the host's bloodstream and infect red blood cells. 
Infected red blood cells rupture and infect other blood cells. Blood stage parasites, or gametocytes, released by infected cells, travel through the bloodstream and wait to be picked up by female Anopheles mosquitoes during a blood meal. The Thai researchers discovered the protein target responsible for the growth of the parasite's DNA. By preventing the growth of the protein target, the new antimalarial P218 chemical aims to stop the DNA of malaria parasites from replicating. The compound can also completely kill malaria parasites. The preclinical trial is expected to take a year and a half to complete, and human trials will last three years. Tree killing beetle set to invade northern US and Canada. A recent study shows a warming climate has expanded tree-killing southern pine beetles' habitats and forests in the northern U.S., which means southern Canada could soon be ravaged by the pests in the coming decades. The southern pine beetle, one of the world's most aggressive tree-killing insects, has typically only lived in Central America and the southeastern United States. Thousands of adult beetles can attack a tree in just two months by carving S-shaped tunnels under the bark. It is predicted that the beetles should gradually spread north along the Atlantic coast all the way up to Canada's Nova Scotia. By 2080, the pest could infest red and jack pines, which extend across more than 270,000 square miles in the U.S. and Canada, which is roughly the size of Afghanistan. According to the U.S. Forest Service, infestations of pine beetles have cost an estimated annual timber loss of $100 million from 1990 to 2004 in the southeastern U.S. Two of America's favorite wild Christmas trees, the Canaan and Fraser firs, may be driven to extinction by an invasive insect. The balsam woolly adelgid, a wingless, soft-bodied insect, is no bigger than a freckle. It reached American soil from Europe in 1900. Infested trees bend and their leaves turn yellow. The most obvious symptom is the white woolly balls that dot the needles of infested trees. The pest is sedentary, after emerging from their eggs, the insects remain in the same location. Upon invasion, trees produce reaction wood. Its harder texture makes absorbing water and nutrients more difficult. The only known remedy is predator beetles, which eat the insects' eggs. Park rangers in the eastern U.S. are releasing the beetles as a form of biological control. Entomologists say the trees may eventually develop a defense mechanism against the pests but it might take 100,000 years. This is what happens when you don't sleep tight and do let the bed bugs bite. One New Jersey man decided to take matters into his own hands after he discovered bed bugs in his home. He consulted the Google gods and used a space heater, a hair dryer, and heat gun to heat the bugs out. In order to kill the bed bugs, he had to maintain a temperature of at least 110 degrees for three hours, but things got a little too steamy in the bedroom and the man ended up setting a fire. The fire, which started around noon, was quickly put out by firefighters, but a larger fire broke out shortly after 5 p.m. Firefighters were able to squelch the second fire, but one of them needed to be taken to hospital. The owner of the home was also taken to the hospital with unspecified injuries. Looks like the bed bugs won this battle. A total of 211 million parasitoid wasps will be released in order to battle the black-headed caterpillar pest that has destroyed coconut plantations across Thailand. The black-headed caterpillar, Officina arenocella walker, infests coconut palm trees, causing considerable damage and reducing plant yield. The caterpillars utilize the tree fronds as a source of food. The Agricultural Extension Department is planning to breed and release the parasitoid wasp Bracken hepator in an effort to combat the pests. They plan to release a total of 211.2 million wasps into the environment over a 24-week period. Parasitoid wasps parasitize larvae, leading to the eventual shriveling and death of the organism. The government has estimated that drought and pests have caused coconut output to drop by 6% since 2011. Canadian researchers discovered that they can use bees to drop off pest control agents while they pollinate crops. A wooden dispenser containing biopesticide was installed at the entry and exit of the hive. The bees automatically pick up the pesticide as they leave their hives. Experiments have shown the bees have successfully distributed the fungus Boveria bassiana to greenhouse sweet peppers. 
The fungus kills pests such as whiteflies, aphids and ligers. This method, known as bee vectoring, received approval from the Canadian government in early 2013. Scientists say crop pests have been creeping poleward each year for the last 50 years. Currently, about 10 to 16 percent of global crop production is lost to pests every year, which is estimated to be enough to feed 9 percent of the world's population. Crop pests and viruses are moving away from the equator by nearly 3 kilometers per year since 1960, largely helped by global warming. Global surface temperatures have risen 0.12 degrees Celsius on average per decade, allowing pests to live in places that were too cold in the past. The spread of pests is also caused by humans transporting crops and farming equipment. Scientists warn that the increased loss of crops to pests will pose a serious threat to global food security.